Yeah, hi, it's Cherry Pop. We're about to pop off some peanut butter and jelly popcorn. Come on! The nice thing about this recipe is it's only six ingredients. You got your kernels of your choice, jelly, peanut butter, sugar, salt, and unsalted butter. We're gonna use an air popper for this. Uh, you can get them for like 30 bucks. They're pretty dope. And what I like about them is they don't really impart any flavor onto the kernels because they're just like blowing hot air. And I'm using an heirloom kernel. They're a little smaller than your traditional kernels. So uh, the air popper recommends you do a half cup of kernel, which is like that much. Um, with the smaller kernels and lighter ones, if you put the exact amount, you'll see that they kind of like start popping out in the bowl before they're actually popped. So I can kind of demo that right now just to show you. So disappointing. You're gonna pop this thing off and you're just gonna have a bowl full of unpopped kernels. Nobody wants that. Why would you want that? Um, so we're just gonna do the old restart. I'm gonna add a little more kernels to weigh it down. Uh, there is a risk of adding too many kernels in here. If you don't see them like moving around enough, they should be popping up like a couple inches consistently. The popper can overheat because not enough of that hot air is escaping. So I like to add just like a little bit more at a time until they're like just kind of popping up uh, an inch or two. I might do like a zoom shot on this just to illustrate what you want to see. you leave it going until it's basically empty, you're gonna have like 20 extra unpopped kernels flying in because they're too stubborn to pop. You don't want that. So like I, I usually let it kind of settle in so that they don't pop after being in the bowl and like give you that little confetti. You can do the confetti if you want, it's kind of fun. I like to just leave it like that. You'll get a few pops over like 30 seconds potentially and then you can whir the air for like a few seconds to get all the, the popped ones in your bowl. Just like that. So now I've got a bunch of little popcorn crumbs and nasty kernels that nobody wants to eat because it hurts your teeth. If you have teeth, if you don't have teeth, why are you eating popcorn? What the heck? Put your dentures in, pop off, baby. Also, you probably saw as it was popping, I did a little rotation uh, technique. You just kind of rotate the bowl because it gets, when this pops in, it's got like this little mountain hill type of thing. And if you just leave it the whole time unattended, the kernels will just fall off and like out of the bowl and then you have to clean your whole house. So after you've popped your corn into your bowl, which is preferably really big, basically go for like twice, basically go for twice the size bowl you think you need. Uh, start with that because there's really no issue with having a giant bowl. We're going to be like mixing around in here and shaking. And, like, you want to be able to just have that full range of motion and not be worried about, you know, letting that stuff fly all over your floor and owning a broom. <laughs> After you're popped off, uh, the next step is to head over to the old stove top and make your uh, peanut butter and jelly gravy. It's almost as good as KFC gravy. We gotta keep going. You can't just stop. This is like plain popcorn. What kind of video would that be? Throw your burner on low heat and melt down three tablespoons or 43 grams of unsalted butter. 
Add about three tablespoons or 38 grams of granulated sugar and mix it in like we're about to make cookies. Next, we're gonna unsuccessfully attempt to get our peanut butter off the spatula and into the pan. I use crunchy peanut butter because I love the texture of those little nut nuggets on my popcorn, but any variation works great in this recipe. Always be sure to leave your spatula in the boiling hot pan so it melts. Next, we're gonna throw in some strawberry jam, but feel free to use whichever jelly or jam you're craving. I usually go with about three quarters of a cup or 177 milliliters of each peanut butter and jelly. I went a little lighter on this batch and it was still great. We're gonna take our spatula and mix constantly until the jelly is fully melted and we have a cohesive sauce. Feel free to increase the burner heat a touch to expedite that jelly melt. Try experimenting with different ingredients that are not liquid at room temp. A few of my faves are cookie butter, hazelnut cocoa spread, and guava jelly. It's pretty fun to play around with different things to throw into this. You can also tweak the technique and try things like browning the butter first, which results in a nuttier flavor with more depth. Once the sauce is cohesive throughout, take it off the heat and continue stirring to let it cool. Dumping a piping hot sauce on our popcorn will make it soggy and wilted. I'm guessing this is due to the steam coming off of the sauce. Now that we've got a great looking sauce, let's head back over to the popping station and throw this on our popcorn. So now we got our old gravy. Little swirl, inside out, middle out. Just like that one show where they're like, middle out, this is the algorithm. I shouldn't have ruined the swirl shot with a dumb joke like that. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Cause it's gooey. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Uh, all right, so now we swirled it on. We do this little shake. Basically it's all in your wrist. Um, you can just stir it too. Like you can do whatever you want, but I developed this dope ass like basically if you ever like beaten an egg where you just slap the sides of the bowl with your fork, it's like kind of the same thing, but you're holding the bowl and you just go sideways, like back and forth. And uh, this is an awesome way to mix this. It's like so easy. And like, if you practice it, you get nice and smooth like this motion. And then I like to basically rotate my grip so that you're do a little bit like this, a little bit like that. Well, snack for the chef. And now like, you can see I didn't even have to stir this and it's like, look at that dispersion. I don't know, that's even a word. Next, you just pull out your salt. I don't measure this. Uh, I mean like, you just salt it to taste. I've been doing it long enough that I know you want exactly that much salt. And you just do a little, Every time I do this in front of people, they're like, no, do the salt bay. And then you just do a little more shaky shake. Flavor wise, it's basically done. Next, all we gotta do is pop in the oven so it's not wet and soggy. You just wanna dry it out and like a low heat oven will give you not burned kernels because popcorn burns super easily. And then you get like the dry texture you want that's kind of like caramel corn, but maybe not as aggressive because it's not literally caramel. It's more like KFC gravy. Yeah, okay, wait for the jack is jack. Police are on the scene, you know what I mean? I think vanilla ice would sue a popcorn person. You just want to spread this evenly. On your, on your baking sheet, so. You bring this guy back and just highly recommend getting these as like spread out as possible. Uh, this isn't horrible, but this is about the max clustering I would go with is like about an inch, inch and a half height of consistent popcorn all throughout. The more space you have between all this popcorn, uh, the better texture you're going to have in the end because it can like dry out. I've never experimented with this, but you could probably put it on like a, a rack or something so the heat can even get under it. That would probably help too. Uh, basically what we're going for in the oven is just getting it dried out. Now that we've laid out our beautiful kernels onto this baking sheet, we're just gonna take it over the oven, bake it at about 290 for eight minutes, and then give it a little stir around so that we make sure we have even heat distribution and drying. And then we're gonna throw it back in the oven for about eight more minutes. And then we're gonna pull it out and let it cool. Ooh, good to go.
So we are out of the old oven and ready to start cooling. So the first thing you want to do after you pull it out of the old oven is grab your old, your old foil corners and take it off this uh, really hot pan because that's going to continue um, heating the bottom potentially, which has given me like inconsistent results. I like to cool it as rapidly as possible. Just like, you know, lay it out on your counter or table. Kind of ran out of space here. One tip, uh, if you do put it in your oven and it starts burning, you should just start over and make a new batch because this is so easy to make. It's like 30 minutes. But if you really want to try salvaging it, you can just add extra sugar, which will combat that like burned bitterness. Uh, if it's not totally torched and it's just like a little browner than you want. Pop off a batch of pan burn jelly popcorn. I think you'll really like it. Thanks for watching my video.